We're here at Met Fantasy Camp with one of the most, one of the favorite people that have been on Sports Talk New York. He's one of the most popular downloads, Eric Hillman. Eric, so far, first couple of days, impression of Fantasy Camp? Once again, love it. I mean, love it, love coming down here. This was an opportunity to, uh, it's always an opportunity to come down and uh, visit the place where, you know, my baseball career started. You know, first time I came down here, spring of 1988, my entire baseball career was ahead of me. Uh, I was talking about this with Pete Shurek today, and it's kind of very nostalgic and kind of uh, really, uh, well, unbelievable to come back down. Now that our baseball careers are 10 years behind us or so, it's just uh, it's a great place to be. Kind of, it's, it's more of a homecoming. And what's that general feeling when you, you're with the guys that you came up with and you're out on the fields that you were a kid trying to make the team? What, put that in perspective. What does that feel like being on those fields? You know, it's a shared experience. I mean, we, we came down here, we did everything we could to possibly maximize our uh, the odds of us playing in New York and being able to uh, really chase and follow our childhood dream. That's all I've ever wanted to do. I was extremely lucky, very fortunate that I had an opportunity. The Mets gave me an opportunity to, uh, to make the most of uh, my, my ability, and I certainly want to thank them by coming down here as, as much as I can to, uh, you know, try to give a little bit of back to the, to the Mets fans that supported, us, that supported us, even though we didn't have the best teams uh, in the early 90s. Now, the interesting thing is, is that your personality is as big as you are tall down here. <laughs> now, when you were you know, a rookie trying out for the team, were you as, you know, gregarious, as funny, as witty out on the field? Or is that something that's developed over time? Yeah, I mean, I am who I am. I've never tried to try to saddle or never tried to uh, keep my mouth closed. I mean, uh, I, I, was, I felt fortunate. I mean, guys like David Cohen, John Franco, Doc Gooden, uh, Viola, Saberhagen, they all liked me you know, hanging out and goofing around the spring training. In fact, when I got up, finally got up to New York, you know, David Cohen was like, hey, we finally got you up here. You know, as you can really, uh, you know, I always felt accepted. I never had any of the, the, the traditional rookie hazings kind of pulled on me because I, uh, at the same time, I liked having fun, but I did respect the veterans, and I certainly respected the, uh, the organization that I was a part of. Being 6'10 also helped a little bit, I would imagine, right? Um, <laughs> couple, uh, a couple of other things. The big thing that uh, everyone's talking about in the baseball world is uh, the Hall of Fame vote. Yeah. Uh, looking at that, what's your opinion on the fact that the Baseball Writers of America chose to vote nobody in, in this particular year? I think it's, uh, you know what, you reap what you sow. When you, when you cheat, you look at what, what's happened with Lance Armstrong over the last few days, he's decided to come forward. He's decided to, uh, to face the music. And none of these guys are willing to face the music when the obvious, uh, I think when the ev evidence is really piled up against them. And uh, as far as no, no votes, as far as nobody getting into the Hall of Fame, I think it's the right thing to do. You know, it, it's, it's tarnished, it's tarnished the game of baseball. And uh, it's tarnished, uh, you know, as for me, I never, I never did it, never tried to do it, never wanted to do it. This has been a childhood dream of mine. I certainly, you know, what's the cliche? You don't poop in your own backyard. And I certainly wasn't going to do that. Yeah. And being a pitcher that pitch in that era, not doing it now after your career is over. I should have done it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, is, is them not getting in some sort of vindication for you not doing it? I mean, do you feel like, were you happy with that vote? I was happy with that vote because these guys consistently are lying. And I, you know, I'm not going to name names. I think we all know who, who was up and who didn't get in. Uh, but when you sit there and you, you can't lie, you've got, you've got, you know, that's the one thing about growing older, getting more mature. And when we're young, we're kids, we're some, some are arrogant, some are confident. But as you get older, you need to be able to address the person that's in the mirror. You know, you can't just look in the mirror to make sure you don't have any food in your teeth and make sure your, your, your hair is parted to the right side. You got to look in the mirror and see who's, who's inside there because you know, I'm not, I'm not that religious of a guy, but every day we get closer to our final destination, and I think you really want to be at peace with yourself and spend as much time in your life as you can being at peace with yourself. You know? Of all the things you could have said about looking into the mirror and dusting, you had to go with the hair, right? You had to go with the hair. Uh, <laughs> you know, the other thing is, though, two-sided. You take a look at and I, I mean, here in New York and being a Met fan, a lot of the Met fans are outraged that Mike Piazza didn't get in because, you know, there really was, there were some whispers by some yeah. factions, but it wasn't a, as strong as, you know, the Clemens and the Bonds. Mm -hmm. um, in the same respect, when Tony La Russa and Joe Torre come up for votes as managers in the hall, do you think the writers will still be in the same lockstep and not vote for them, considering that those two rosters of the Cardinals and Yankees 
probably had the most prevalence of steroids, and all those wins came with the steroids. Do you think there's going to be a double standard with these riders? I don't think so. I mean, guys like Tony Larusa and uh, Joe Torrey are, you know, just synonymous with, with, with the game of baseball, with baseball success. You can't, you know, they shouldn't be penalized. They can't be penalized. Whether they knew what was going on, I don't necessarily think they did know what was going on. I mean, you saw McGuire. He had he had creatine in the background of his, you know, and a lot of, a lot of the interviews he had, you know, and, and admitted doing creatine. I think, you know, nothing wrong with that in my book. But, you know, when you take that next step, when you go to some sort of synthetic, you know, performance-enhancing drug, it definitely separates you from the traditional baseball player. And uh, But guys like Lasorda and, uh, and Torrey have... I have nothing but the utmost respect for both of them, and there's no way that when their when their votes come up, I, I see both of them being uh, you know first first ballot Hall of Famers. And then just bringing it back full circle, you know, you came out here living the dream. Um, obviously, these guys are never going to be professional ball players, but they're living their dream in some respects too. Would you see you know, the guys ranging 30 up to 77 years yeah. old, and really going through these motions, coming into the locker room and doing the whole major league experience? For someone that's been that major league and you see that joy of the act, just the jo playing for the joy of the game, what does that tell you about the game of baseball itself? Well, the, the thing that I love mainly about coming down here is the game of baseball doesn't care who you are, what you do, you know, away from the diamond. It's kind of like playing blackjack, right? You can play the blackjack tables for the, you can play the five dollar table, or you can play the hundred dollar table. Same game. And when you come down here, you have guys who are CEOs. You know, rubbing elbows, playing with average Joes, and in, in, in away from this, in away from this environment, there's a lot of times that this, that social, you know, the social classes that they're in and the, the, the circles that they're running in, their paths are never going to meet. But you come down here. I mean, what we had Duncan Niederauer, the uh, the CEO of the Nasdaq, down here a couple of years ago. I mean, here's a guy who is extremely obviously financially well off, and yet you have guys who are trying to sock away money. We got a guy down here at this camp who. He put away, he came down for his 30th birthday. He put away, and he loved it, he put away $50 every paycheck, every two weeks, to save enough money to come back down. Five years later, he's back down here. So you have guys that, uh, you know, you have the haves and the haves nots, but when they come down here, they, they, they're, they're bonding together, they're playing together, they're, 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 they're winning together or losing together, but they're going, they're going to battle every day. They love to compete, they love the Mets, they, and they have an opportunity to come down here and actually see how, how, how we live our life, because I don't, I don't miss, I don't necessarily miss the games per se. I don't miss going out and competing. I miss the guys like Shurik. I miss uh, I miss Ay. I miss my teammates. I miss that camaraderie because these guys were family. I've known, you know, Pete's Pete's 43 years old. I'm 46. I've known Pete since he was 18 years old. So we've lived a majority of our lives, you know, in that fraternal brotherhood that baseball uh, consists of. Well, that's the one thing. I mean, you walk in here, and especially after this particular year that we've had. You know, with the presidential election and the country being so divided, whether you're pro-right, pro-left, anti-gun, pro-gun, anti-abortion, you know, pro-abortion, you walk in here and it, and it doesn't matter. You have a glove, you have a bat, you're a Met fan, you're good to go. Yeah. You don't find that in many walks of life, and that's what this week is. So it's a kind of a breath of fresh air. Um, what are you looking forward to the most out of the next couple of days? Just continued, uh, con continued camaraderie, and getting to know these guys even that much more. For us, I mean, we're all baseball guys. That was our, that was our career, our chosen path. And yet, we come down here and we get an opportunity to meet these guys who, who are, you know, either bankers, lawyers, you know, all kinds of different walks of life, and we get an opportunity to kind of walk a little bit in their shoes, see what they, what they get to do for a living. But yeah, I'm not, I'm not pro, you know, pro abortion, pro life, you know. I don't know. That's the one thing that I love, I love about being down here. No political talk, just, just love of the Mets. Whether you're, uh, doesn't matter who you are, where you're from, or what you do, we all have that one foundation that bonds us. So it was great. Hi, right, brother. Yeah. Great seeing you. That's awesome.